Thoughts and Moments, Volume 1. It started, I mean, really, I think it's because I didn't want to go straight into, like, a fully-fledged album after my first record because I think I'm, I was in the last record for so long. I wanted a bit of time to just, I guess, be a bit more creative and experimental, not think too much, really, just kind of create. I think when I make an, a, a second album, I'll have some more guidelines about, you know, what it is and what I'm trying to do, whereas I wanted to to make a project that's a bit more free. The so I mean, the songs all started in different ways, really. Um, like Best Friend, for example, I start on guitar, so I write it all on acoustic guitar, and then um, once it's kind of written, I'll take it to a producer, um, and I usually get Ed to come and play uh, guitar, because he's a phenomenal guitarist, and uh, can usually do songs with a lot more justice than I ever could, so on this one he came in. Um, we moved it from acoustic to electric, and. Uh, you know, those guys put their flavours on and, you know, took it to a better space. I liked the little noodles you were doing in between. Yeah. I love just vibes and interludes. and You know, I can come up with an idea and be like, oh, this is such a nice vibe. Like, I just want to hear this on loop for God knows how long and just kind of scat over it. So that's how I started thinking of this project as, oh, let me try just do like a vibes project. That was the, the starting point. And I think lyrically as well, I thought I liked just kind of, the first things I come up with, I like just putting those down and that usually becomes the song. Um, and, you know, when I'm writing, I guess properly, I tinker with it for a long time to finesse things, story and lyrics. But sometimes you can lose a bit of the, the energy or the vibe in doing that. I guess I wanted to do something that was just more, really free. And that was the initial idea of thoughts and moments. You know, working that as a solo artist, like, you know, one of the things I find hardest is the kind of, you know, getting the right headspace and, you know, collaborating because essentially you are, you know, by yourself. You're always kind of looking for new spaces and this and that. There's a really good friend of mine, Chris Webb, who um, mentioned to me ages ago that, you know, he's got a studio. So I caught the train up there kind of having no idea what it was going to be like and then you know, rocked up and, uh, I mean, he built, like, a full-on studio with his bare hands and I just couldn't believe it, you know, it's proper. I did a lot of work on this project there, um, especially in terms of recording vocals and I think it just really helped clear my headspace because I got a bit stuck. I booked that in because I think the next week I knew I was going to Sweden to wrap up the project and I hadn't recorded the vocals and, you know, part of me wanted to do that in Sweden with Carl, but then I think when I was getting good kind of results, at Chris's studio, um, it made sense to kind of wrap them up there and then take the, the vocals to Sweden because then I have more time to work on music, you know. I can take a long time to record vocals. Not necessarily because I'm doing things like word for word or take for take. I think sometimes I'm just quite fussy about getting the vibe right for certain things or I want to try different things. Uh, the voice is an instrument, isn't it? So sometimes you can want to sing things a bit more relaxed or push a bit forward and it's my you know, hobby and the joy of mine so sometimes I just fucking say run it again because I actually just want to sing again even if we've got a take so yeah. <laughs>